I'm going to roll with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, we knocked ourselves out the box for a minute. But anyway, but people going to adult learning school and everything, trying to get what the world is telling them to get. huh? And for some, it's harder than others. Amen. I remember when I was sitting in the college, I didn't understand nothing about no polynomials and trigonometry. I'm like, Jesus Christ, what are y'all talking about up in here? Amen. You know what I mean? And Spanish always was hard for me. And in high school, I failed Spanish. Somebody say amen. Amen. So when the Lord blessed me to speak in tongues, I know it had to be the Lord because I couldn't speak. I was trying to, you know, uh, como esta, muy bien, gracias. You know what I mean? All that. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. I've been better off learning from people out on the world. You know what I'm saying? Because what they was trying to teach us, the, the, the uh, God bless you, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, the right way to speak Spanish. I wasn't learning nothing. You know what I mean? I might as well have came to class and just put a, uh, some stoppers in my ears. Come on, say amen. Amen. Sometimes, now, some people can be like that with the word of God. The more you talk to them, unless God open up their understanding. Come on, say amen. And this is what Paul said. This is not done with excellent of speech. It has to be done with the power of God. I mean, this is not my word. What I'm sharing with you all, I love it. And what do I love about it? it, it listen, it, it, it's not, once you get into the word of God, it's not so popular. Amen. I mean, when you take away the smoke and the mirrors or, or the, the fine cars and the tithes and the offering, if you can get people and, and if you can uh, uh, get them to stay with you and bring you money and stuff like that, that's all well and good. But let's get to the real fine brass text of tax of what the gospel is all about. It was about Jesus. Amen. Or let's say for God to love the world, right? That he sent Jesus because he saw the world was a mean world. And the world had fallen. So let's let's say, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the homosexual. Come on, say amen. That's what the world means. For God so loved the sinner, the liar, the fornicator, the adulterer, the hater, the pedophile, the, the very things that we as human beings, though we sin, there are certain things we don't like. But yet the Bible says, for God so loved the world. So let me put it back in there again. For God so loved the rapist. Well, oh, I'm hot out of old shot. Huh? Come on, help him, huh? For God so, because somebody got to change this rapist mind. Huh? Somebody got to somebody got to save this pedophile. Come on, huh? Somebody got to save this liar. Come on, huh? Somebody got to save this thief. Can I get a witness? Somebody got to save the fornicator, the adulterer, the homosexual, the Jezebel, the gangbanger, the murderer, the hater, the cursor. Y'all walking with me? So for God so loved the world. Y'all got it? See, that, that brought in the horizon of the scripture, right? See, that's different from just saying for God so loved the world. For God so loved the sinner. Uh, well, what sin are you talking about? Now you throw certain things out because we get used to the, the crackhead pointing at the heroin out at it, right? But you're both sinning. Come on. Huh? You're both under the influence of something. Come on. Huh? The heroin addict or the alcoholic pointing at the weed smoker. But you're both addicted to something. Come on. Can I get a witness? Now, I mean, if you can drink and don't be addicted, that's another level. If you can smoke and don't be addicted. But then it comes down, is it harming your body? Now, if you can smoke a drink and it don't harm your body, okay, okay. Because now you talk to people right after people die. You talk to them about smoking cigarettes. And all my life, I've known they say, warning, the surgeon general, not all my life, but many of my life, many years, it said, warning, the surgeon general, because it don't say that no more. So that's how, how long it's been on here. The surgeon general determines that cigarette smoking is what? Dangerous to your health. Now you talk to people, what they say? Well, you got to die some kind of way. Huh? Well, I know folk that been lit to be a hundred and they smoke. You know, you got to leave them alone. But at least you tell them. And why do you say anything at all, elders? Because the Bible says, know you not that your body is the temple if you come into God. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about people that say they love God, beloved. I know we in the book of Col Colossians, but I got to walk into it. Is that right? Walk us into things that we're... Everybody, not everybody, but the people that are in the believing God category. All of them say, I believe in God. But if you not believe in God according to the scripture, what are you believing? Me and the brother was just talking about all over the world. What is one and one? Whether you speak Russian or not, one and one is two. Whether you speak Dominican, one and one is two. You speak Hebrew, Greek, one and one is two. You speak English, Swahili, Chinese, Japanese. Guess what? One and one is what? Two. 
So why, when it comes to the word of God, is it all, is it different for the Chinese? I'm sorry, he said, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Whether you are Russian, whether you are Chinese, Japanese, y'all got my point? Mm -hmm. But everybody, when you talk to them, well, God knows my heart, and he, surely he does. And when we say God knows my heart, we can be just as wrong as just two left shoes, but we, gonna, we say, well, God knows what I really mean, right? But if you ever read Genesis chapter 6, did you know that God says that your heart is evil, man's heart is evil, continuously and wicked? And it hurt a repentant God that he made, man. Now, that's in the sixth chapter. Now, I know in the first four chapters, somewhere along there, it said God said all things were good, right? Well, guess what? Two chapters later, he was sick of what he made. You know why? Because right in the third chapter, in the beginning, there was Satan. Tempting Eve, right? And then there was Eve with Satan, tempting Adam. And there was Adam falling to the temptation, the fall of man. Amen? Mm -hmm. And ever since that day. Satan ain't changed his tactics. Why would I change a tactic if I was Satan? Why would I change my tactic in business if it works? Is that right? If what, what you know, my dad said something yesterday. Whatever you, and when you get involved in a relationship, whatever made that relationship work from the beginning, male or female, right? You got to go back to that. You got to find out what drew you to that woman. What drew you to that man? What drew that man to you? What drew that woman to you? Amen? Now, if you was a liar, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Maybe you got to go back to lying. I ain't telling nobody lie, but you understand what's up? We're just throwing that out there. Well, so, or you got to sit down and tell them, hey, I lie. You understand what I'm saying? And tell the truth. But whatever it was that magnetism that drew him, drew her, drew you, drew you to him, to her, you got to find out. Now, I'm talking about when things are messed up. Y'all walking with me? You got to find out what, 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 what was it that drew me to him? What was it that drew me to her? Why am I, what, 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 why, 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 why? I don't stutter, but sometimes it sounds like I do. Why? How did I get with her? How did I get with him? And you sit down and count up the call. And because you know what you have, but you don't know what you're going to get. Come on. Huh? So you jump now, you know, because what I thought about it, we, we put so much time in with a person to walk away and after a while, I hate, I don't, maybe I'm not going to say it right, so y'all forgive me. But it's like your marketing value as a human being is not there anymore. Did I, y'all get my point? You don't, you don't have the same tenacity you, as a man, as a woman. You, you, you're not as young as you were, right? You put all this energy to him, to her, and now are you going to throw it in the garbage? You got to start all over again? Lord God help us. I don't know how I walked down this line. I, don't even, I didn't even, I don't know how I got here, but I got to stay here for a minute. Praise the Lord. So we ought to be praying because if it was the wrong reason that drew me to her, the wrong reason that drew me to him, then if I came, became introduced into Christ, I need a miracle. God, I was wrong, but make me right. Can I get a witness? And since I jumped the gun, Lord have mercy. Since two people have become one, even though maybe we not, may not even seem like one, we definitely seem like two. But if we're one and we're still here, Lord, can you help me to be a better man? Can you help me to be a better woman? Can you help us to build with one another? You understand what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I hope this is for somebody since I'm here. And if it's not for y'all, maybe somebody else that's listening. Can I get a witness? Because so many relationships are messed up. First thing that comes to me right now is 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Anybody can read that for me? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. 33, 34, and then 40. Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. Anybody have it already? I, I know what it says. It says God is not the author. 14, 33. The God is not the author of confusion, right? Yeah. Okay. Give it to me nice and loud. Please. Please. God is not a God of confusion. Confusion means there's no order. You understand what I'm saying? And the reason why y'all hear me talk so much about relationship, because what did God start with in the, in the beginning? Relationship. So because a lot of us miss it, we think we can do what we want to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody has to obey God. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. 
whether you like it or not, if you want your uh, relationship to be a success with whoever you with or with God, since you, you know, you know, it was a time where, where mama and daddy told us when you meet him, when you meet her, bring him on over to the house, right? So mama and daddy could take a look at him and take a look at her, right? But most of what do we do when we, you know, we found him or her and be, we made our own decision because we said, what? I'm grown. Is that right? Mama don't have to like him. Mama don't have to like her. Mama don't have to like, daddy don't have to like him. Dad don't have to like, but when we got in trouble, who we call them? Mom and dad. Mama, daddy, can you, you know what I mean? But we, we, we did it backwards. Do you understand what I'm saying? We were supposed to bring the girl, bring the guy to the house so daddy and mama could sit down and talk with the young man, talk with the young woman, see what you can't see. Amen? Now, let's take Almighty God. So if mom and daddy could see what we can't see, what about Almighty God? He see all things, right? But many of us jump the gun without God. Amen? Yeah. Now, somewhere in between, we get feelings, and now we bring God into the equation of what we done started. Right? Y'all walking with me? So now we need to ask God, save me. Deliver me. Help me the more. Amen? And since you made a, uh, a, a commitment, whether you knew it or not, now you need to pray for your significant other. Can I get a witness? And you might say to yourself, they need more prayer than you, than you care to talk about. Can I get a witness? Amen? Because it's hard bringing people together. Huh? When, you, when you move away what drew you from the beginning. And you get into learning him and learning her. Sometimes you don't, it, it's hard. Is that right? It's hard. Because you know what? Now let me share this with you. Your relationship, you know, the Bible said the two shall become what? So your man, your woman have to be to you like your arm. You know how you just said you hurt your arm? You don't want to cut it off though, do you? You want it to get well. Is that right? So your other one is going to have to compensate for the one that's hurt. Is that right? That's how it is with your man and your woman. You got to compensate, whether you like it or not. I, you can say he's a sorry man, she's a sorry woman, or, you know, whatever you say. Whatever I'm talking about the negative, because if it's positive, we don't need to talk about it, right? We talk about the negative. Whatever you say about him, whatever you say about her, that's not nice. You, as the man, you, as the woman, you have to compensate for your significant other. If you come together sexually, then you got to come together mentally and spiritually. Come on, say that. So that means you you supposed to in the word of Lord if they never taught you this because sometimes in church when they get in trouble uh, the, the man go to the pastor the pastor don't know what to say he he go the woman go to him it seems like sometimes they more catered to the woman than they catered to the to the man and so they don't help the relationship get any better they right in the church still messed up because instead of the pastor telling them what I'm telling you all right now that you are one y'all not two you one. Come on, huh? You have to compensate for him. And whatever you say he is, whatever trouble, then you got to go into your prayer closet and say, Lord, save him, help him, deliver him. Hallelujah. Make him not only the man I want him to be, but first, God, it's not my will, but your will. Make him the man you want him to be. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't walking with me, huh? Lord, if, because guess what? If God make him the man and make her the woman that God wants that man or woman to be, guess what? The only person going to have a problem is you if you're not in the will of God. Woo, did you hear what I said? So it's not about me, even me as a man, being in control. It's about a woman being under the control of God. Can I get a witness? It's not so much about the woman, amen, wanting a man to do what she wanted to do, but about him being under the control of God. And then are you under the control of God so that when God takes the control, that he, when he gets the control of that man's mind, and when he gets the control of that woman's mind, that you can deal with it because you're under control. Because if you're not under control, guess what? You're going to be the devil in their life. Can I get a witness? God's going to be saying one thing and you're going to be saying something else. You got people fighting against God and talking about they they godly. You can't fight against God and call yourself God. Well, you can do it, but that's a liar. That's a deceiver. Can I get a witness? All right. Wow, how did I get there? I don't know how I got there, y'all. But I hope it was worthwhile. Let's go back to the book of Colossians. Praise the Lord. Um, 
Somebody give me the fifth verse because I, I lost. I lost. I just hit it. You know why? Why? Maybe suppose I suppose freelance because I can't say that. Go ahead. The fifth verse, Colossians so, chapter two. But so, so, I am absent from you in the body. All right. Though I'm when I'm absent from you in the body. Let's put, bring it up to twenty thirteen. So you can go ahead. All right. I am present with you in spirit. I'm present with you. In, you I pray for y'all when when I'm not around you. Because I don't, listen, if I died right now, the things that I've said to you, I thank you for coming. I thank you for listening. But I want them to go with you beyond this room. Do you understand what I'm saying? I wanted to be with you in your relationship. I wanted to be with you on your job. Because on Christ, what? The solid rock we stand. All what? Other ground is what? Sinking sand. Can I get a witness? Go ahead. And delight to see how orderly. Woo! What? Hold it. What? Orderly. I delight to see how what? Orderly. Orderly. You are, and how firm the faith in Christ is. All right. Did y'all see that? I didn't even know. I brought in First Corinthians, which says God is not the author of confusion, right? Mm -hmm. But see, that goes with that. You know what I mean? He said, I want to see how orderly you are, because you got to walk in order. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because what I didn't finish in the next of uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 33, then it talks about the 30, 34th verse where it says, let the women keep silent if they want to know anything. Let them ask them their husbands at home. Is that right? And this was in the church meeting, which most of the women that I test today, if you throw that at them, oh, oh no, that was back there. That was a, you know what I mean? Then, then so, so it's talking about fornication. That's yesterday too, right? So it's talking about adultery and homosexuality, but you don't want your man cheating on you, right? So why, why, why all of a sudden when it tells a woman, amen, to, to, to upscale a man, to be submissive to a man, why is that scripture wrong? But yet if a man is out committing fornication or adultery, you, you want to tell him, oh, or go to the pastor, or whoever, oh, he's wrong. You understand? But now when it tells you to be a humble woman, oh, no, that was in, in the prehistoric time. The devil is a liar. Do you understand what I'm saying? This, the Bible is for us right now. Today, Hebrews 13 and 8 says, or, uh, yeah, 13 and 8, because I, before I told you all 13 and 7, and it's 13 and 8, I think it says, Jesus Christ the same today, yesterday, and when? Forever. Huh? <laughs> Give me you, um, you, what you have, Colossians or Corinthians, or both? Yeah, all right. First, and that's right. First Corinthians chapter 14. And 40 says, I believe, let everything be done decent and in order. <laughs> Anybody have it so you know? Because I'm not looking in the book. I don't want to be wrong. You got it? Is that what it says? In order. Now give me that verse again in Colossians. Now that was 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 40, right? So it said, let what things be done? All things. Do y'all see? Because you say, Elder, you seem to go back. And remember when we first started some years ago, I used to always talk about the Jezebel spirit because I didn't want y'all women to be so dominant. You understand what I'm saying? Because we're living in a dominant time. And trust me, I'm a man. I grew up with a mother and father. Then when my mother and father went this way and came back together, whatever, I understand why women are dominant. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand what women have to go through. Don't 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 get that twisted. I do understand. Some women had to boil their fists up. You look halfway decent and you trying to walk to the store in the wrong place, you almost got to fight. They almost protect your, your, your body. Come on, Sam. Uh, protect your child. If the man ain't there to help you, the women have, had to learn to fight. Can I get a witness? But we're not just talking about the natural. We're talking about the spiritual, right? So let your fight in, uh, enemy be uh, like what they say, like martial art, like uh, what they call it, uh, a secret weapon, right? But as the woman of God, though, you're supposed to walk as a lady. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if you got pushed in the corner like a cat, right, and you got to crown the guy upside his noggin, then so be it. Praise the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? But your, but your, <laughs> praise the Lord. But your main focus, amen, is what on Christ, the solid rock I stand. Right? That's just like if somebody trying to violate you was trying to rape you. You think I, I don't understand a, a, a woman slicing this joker's throat? I'm going a little vile, a little crazy right now. But no, we talking reality, right? But I understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if you're dealing with a man that respects a woman, you're supposed to be what? A lady. Come on, say that. Huh? 
Amen. Same with a man. A man supposed to be a gentleman. Every male becomes a man, but every man does not become a gentleman. Every female becomes a woman, but every woman doesn't become a lady. So in Christ, we are supposed to reach the level of a gentleman. Come on, say amen. In Christ, the women are supposed to reach the, le the level of a lady, but they have to be taught it. There's an order in God. Give me that Colossians, the, the order scripture. Was that uh, Colossians 2 and 5? I am, I am present with you in the spirit and delight to see how orderly you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. All right, so you know what you, you want to basically saying? Let me really break into that. If you under me, you need to recognize the Christ in me, right? So you're not obeying elder. It's just like a woman being in, in uh, a relationship. You're not really just obeying your husband. Who are you obeying? The law, if you in order. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you say, like a lot of women say, and I'm going to go even with a book. He's not right. He ain't, he ain't nobody to follow. Okay, well, how, why'd you win him? You got with him. Give me somebody, give me uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse 8, 18. I don't know how I got here. I didn't plan this, y'all. I mean, I ain't, I'm not apologizing. I'm just saying I'm in the book of Colossians, but my mind is going somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? Peter chapter 2, 18. 2, 18. Say that again, servants be, servants be subject to your master with all fear, right? Now, somebody would throw the Bible away right there. You know what I'm saying? Servants be subject to your masters with all fear. This is why a lot of people of color don't want to listen to the Bible right now, because they don't want to listen to nobody. So they'll say, now hold it, but watch what I'm going to say, y'all. I want y'all to walk with me there. So you throw away the Bible. And we're going to stay there in that, and that, uh, that was First Peter chapter 2, because it's going to show you something there. See, now, put master, father, and mother, children, right? So the father and mother would be the master, is that right? And the children would be what? The servants, right? Put job there. Your boss would be what? The master, right? And you would be the servant, right? you are walking with me? See, that's why you need somebody to show you the scripture, right? So in the home, the husband would be what? And the wife would be, and the children would be serving under both of them. Is that right? Now, see it with that picture. Now, let's say that again. Now, servants be what? No, no. Read the scripture. Ser sub servants. 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 When you serve, you minister. Do you understand what I'm saying? A nurse is a servant. Uh, do y'all listen to me? They help you get healed, but they're servant, right? That's ministering. Do you understand what I'm saying? But some people got tired of what the word actually say and try to change it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But let's get to it because I'm showing you a point. Servants, be subject to your master with all submission, right? Go ahead, read the word. Uh-oh, this is what I want y'all to pay attention to, y'all women. As well as, well, the, it have to be women because it's talking about the masters, right? So let's say women, every wife in here, when your husband act up, now this is the scripture for you. What is that? Not only to the good and gentle. Good and gentle. Lord, you're going to have to pray right now. What is that? Not only to the good and the gentle, but to the forward. Now, I didn't look up the word forward, but if it said good and gentle, it had to be the opposite of good and gentle. Okay? Which means maybe a loud mouth, an arrogant, huh? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, so now you can be strong in the law. You know what I mean? But maybe, like the brother said, not strong that way, but strong heart. Because you suppose, a man's supposed to be strong in the law and in the power of his might. But you might be strong in the devil, but you got hooked with him. Now, you, you hear it all over the world. I ain't got to obey him. He ain't nothing. He ain't right. But what did the word just say? What's the word say? Give it to me. Servant be in subjection to your masters with all fear. That's respect. Go ahead. Not only to the good and the gentle. 
but also to the fro, but that's the opposite of the good and the gentle. So that the opposite of good is what? Bad. Gentle is what? The opposite of gentle. It, harsh coarse, right? Okay, so that's bad and coarse. So that means somehow you can't do it with your own mind. This is why you got to follow, pray. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is why we got to pray. Go ahead, give me some more of that scripture right there. I didn't understand that, but being that I read it before, I know it's saying this. You're not going to get no credit for somebody being hard on you if you did wrong. But if you're doing right and they hard on you, God sees what you're going through. And you will be blessed. It may not seem like it at the time. But in other words, just like Jesus, because this is what going, the whole that scripture is getting to, that book is getting to. It's going to let you know that Jesus he didn't fight back. Oh, we, we taught to fight back. Is that right? We, that's common sense. We taught to fight back. But even in common sense, guess what? That's not Jesus' sin. Okay? So, yeah, I understand you're fighting back. We can get together, and even me as the preacher, I can say, yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end of the day, do you want to do what Christ said and try to make it to heaven, or do you want to keep on going with common sense and end up in hell? You, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Because God is able, because we act like God is not able to control a man. We act like God is not able to control a woman. Can I get a witness? Now, if you go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it'll tell you then if the man don't want to be with you, if the woman don't want to be with you, and they tell you they don't want to be with you, then chapter 7 verse 15 says that you're free. But if you're with an unbeliever, you made up your mind to be with this unbeliever for whatever reason, man or woman. And they don't want to leave you. They love you. Even though you say, well, they don't act like, well, they ain't saved. They ain't saved. Love to the saved and love to the unsaved is two different ways. You go to 1 John chapter 2, 15, when it says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because that love is what? Not of the Father. So that means there's two types of love. Is that right? So that man loved you and that woman loved you, but if they ain't in Christ, they don't love you Christ's way. They love you the world's way. But if they love you, the scripture says, in any way, because any type of love at all, strong affection, strong attraction, strong life, even though it might have some devil in it, if they're not trying to destroy you, right? If you can discern that beyond the arguing, beyond the foolishness, that he or she really do care for you, right? You got to pray for them. But then if they're telling you, I don't want you, you the bum of a man. I don't want you, you a bum of a woman. That's not God. But if that's what they don't want to be with you, you can't be with somebody that don't want to be with you. Praise the Lord. Amen? Now you go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew chapter 19, they ask Jesus, can a man leave his wife for every week? Because really a woman wasn't even supposed to leave a man. In fact, 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 7 and 15 is the only cause that a woman can leave a man because a woman is not in control. I know in the world she is, right? But we're talking about to Christian women and believers, right? Now, now I'm not going to say you might say a woman here or somewhere listening can say, well, I done been through too much. I'm not going to take it no more. I'm gone. Bye. Okay. I don't have nothing to do with that. I only can give you the word of God, right? And then you might say, well, I know another man. He's going to love me, and I can live with him to death. If God accepted, I don't have nothing to say, and you're not going to know until the end comes. You know what I mean? So what I will tell you is where you at, though, you better have put all the God in this situation that you can. You better not try to be putting all the psychology, all the sociology, all the get all this junk from other men and other women who ain't telling you what the words are. You better get on your knees and pray because this, what if, you know, because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 19 when they said, can we put away our wives for any cause? Jesus said, no, except for the cause of fornication. That meant cheat, right? And then they said, well, Moses gave us a writing of divorce. And he said, yes, yeah, because of the hardness of your heart. He did that. But from the beginning, it was not so. Whatever God put together, now we understood that God don't put everything together. Okay? 
But now, but still the Bible says marriage is honorable and the bed undefiled. So if you got, I'm not talking about man and man and woman and women, for those of you out there that believe in homosexual marriage. No, no zero, no, nada. God said in Genesis 2.18, it's not good for man to be alone. He made a woman. He didn't make a, he didn't make a, a Steve for, uh, for Adam. Uh -uh. Amen. He made an Eve. And even when we thought that woman was a mankind, Leviticus says man should not lie with man, mankind like he lies with a woman. So that means a woman is not a mankind. Just because the, 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 the name M-A-N is in woman, no, she's not a man of no, no shape, form, or fashion. She came out of a man, but God does not look at her as a man. Do you understand what I'm saying? You are a woman. You are the opposite of man. And you ought to act the opposite of man. Uh, come on and say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now. Uh, so we need to pray. We need to pray and ask God. We need to pray and ask God, amen, how to be the woman, how to be the man in the relationship so that the two will be one and God will get the glory. Can I get a witness? Because if God is not getting the glory, guess who getting the glory? Satan. Whatever you don't give to God, Satan has automatically just comes in and gets the glory. Come on, say amen. Huh? So now, so if you got, if you know, so now, I know it's hard to deal with a fornicating woman, a fornicate man. And the Bible says that, now, it didn't even give the woman that case to get away on fornication. It gave the man the case. You know why? Because the seed comes from the man. So if the woman, see, the woman is under a master. So how can you, hold it. Here it comes. I ain't even noticed some of y'all. The Bible says you can't serve what? So if you got two men, you notice that Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. God didn't get mad with him for that because he was the man. He was the master. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when it came to a woman, a woman can't have what? Two masters. Because she's going to be confused. Because she's going to be pulled by one or pulled by the other. Same thing with you. You can't serve God and the devil. Do you understand? Did I, do that I mean, we may not like it. Yeah, we, don't, we may not like it, but this is the word of God. Do you understand? I don't even, I feel sympathy. That would make me as a man want to treat a woman right, knowing that she got to go through so much. Do you understand? Because women have so much to go through. Men have so much to go through. So we ought to treat one another right. Is that right? And if we treat each other like we are, oh, I just use that. You can treat each other like you your ears. You ain't going to try to hurt your ears, right? I wear glasses. Would you try to hurt your eyes? Now, the Bible says it's better to go into heaven maimed, a blind, uh, uh, maiming one arm or one leg cut off. Well, do you want to cut one of your legs off or one of your arm? No, so what it's saying, you might as well do the right thing. Would you want to go into heaven blind? Would you want to poke out? Can you imagine pulling one of your eyes out or somebody poking your eye out? That's hurt. That's torment. So why be tormented to go to hell? So we need to love one another. Come on, Satan. Right now, we need to be appreciated. Uh, appreciative for what we have because guess what you know when you really learn to appreciate what you have when you don't have anything <laughs> let me let me go on if you don't have no car at all right and you walking through the sleep the rain the snow the wind everything right you don't have nothing guess what you can talk about a hoopty all you want but you appreciate a hoopty that works when you <laughs> when you don't walk right now, some people say they don't eat no pork. Let your stomach get down to where you really, like that prodigal son said, I would eat out the, the hog trough, right? I was talking to a gentleman on the other day and said, I got so down, spent all my money, just got paid, and said, I was about to eat out the garbage can. People do that every day. But so you appreciate some pork. Somebody cook you a pork chop. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen? You, I don't eat no, I tell myself, I don't eat no white bread, not because I never ate it before, because I don't like it at all, because I try to be healthy. But let me be hungry enough. I eat it in a minute, and pork too. Come on, say amen. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying, even a human being, when you go without a man, because you get people getting mad, go without a man, go without a woman. And just imagine in your mind, you don't even have to go through it. Now you can go through it in your mind. Just imagine yourself with no man, no woman at all. Because now you got people talking about, y'all let a man defy you, defi um, define you. In other words, you will feel like you ain't nothing without a man, or you don't feel like you anything without a woman. No, it's not that. The Bible says it's not good to be a or for a man to be alone. So if not good for a man to be alone, guess what? If he ain't going to be alone, he's going to be here. He ain't say be with another man. 
He said be with a, a woman. So that means not good for the woman to be alone, right? So imagine yourself and you can't, you get rid of the man or the woman that you have right now, right? And you don't have no man. You can't find no man. They just passing by you. And the women just passing by you. Guess what that will do? That will humble you to appreciate what you can get. So if you already have, learn to look past the evil. And this is what God, now watch it, watch it. I'm, I'm taking you on to another level. I'm trying. When you understand for God so loved the world. Watch it again. Let's go over it again. So God so loved the rapist. Walking with me? So he saw past the rapist being a raper. Y'all walking with me? So God so loved the adulterer. God saw past the adultery, and he can see this adulterer, this fornicator, this evil man, this evil woman. He sees past them and loves them. Now, you said at one time you loved your man, your woman, right? I'm talking to everybody. Not y'all. This may not even touch y'all, but this must be put out there, okay? Because it's all about relationships. Somebody says it's all about relationships. Okay, please the Lord. So now you got a man. You have a man. You have a woman, but you say, my woman is no good. My man is no good. Or they good, but they, this is what I don't like about. So the God that you say you believe in, you have to see with the eyes of God beyond their evil. Are y'all walking with me? You somehow, if you can't do it, that means you're not where you ought to be in God. You got to get so into God. That God's love. Now watch this. You ever heard somebody say, "Ooh, she put up with him. She just, she crazy. He put up with her, and he he love, he just love her. I don't know what he love about her. What she love about him? And it's, he just as crazy as he want be. She just crazy. That's because the love is there. You get the love. You and you and God and don't have the love. So if you say you got the gifts of this and the gifts of that, but you don't have no love, the Bible says profit you nothing. Am I walking with you? You need love. So what you ought to be praying for is God give me the love. It ain't so much now about speaking in tongue now, because if you get the love, God will give you the rest of everything. Come on, say that. Now you need the love because the love will teach you how to be, amen, a good man, a good woman. Can I get a witness? Now, see, love, even, and this is what Jesus was teaching in the Beatitude. Anybody can love somebody that loved them. Anybody can go an extra mile of the way when somebody is going that way for them. Tit for tat. Come on, sing it. Huh? But he said that don't mean nothing. He said this is what it is. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Can I get a witness? In other words, see, when you're a Christian, when you're a, a lover of God, you got to go beyond the point. Can I get a witness? Huh? People think you're crazy, but you know, when they wonder, why are you still here? I'm not crazy. It's because I got the love of God in me. Come on, can I get a witness? Huh? And why I'm still putting up with you? I'm putting up with you. I know you was a devil. I'm not stupid. You was a devil. But the only way a devil going to get converted is somebody got to show the love of God. Can I get a witness? Huh? Amen. Amen. Yeah, I got tired of you, and I told you that I don't won't be bothered with you no more. But the love of God compels me to do what my flesh said it would not do. Can I get a witness? Amen. So that's the same thing in the relationship. You got to get in the Lord so that you will be more of a man than you thought you would be. You'll be what God tell you to be. You'll be more of the woman that you thought you'd be. I can't put up with. You can put up with what God put up with. And God so loved the world. He so loved you. That he gave himself for you. Now, while you're in a relationship, you got to give up yourself. Come on. Huh? Uh, am I talking right over here? Hallelujah. You got to give up yourself. It's not a one-way ticket. It's the two become one. So when you go downtown, and you, it's so beautiful when I hear some women say, I was going downtown to buy myself something, but I bought my man something. Then they turn around and found out the man loved the woman. So he was going downtown by himself. He bought herself. So they ain't missed nothing. Come on. Can I get a witness? Huh? Because he's thinking about her and she's thinking about him. So you don't miss. Huh? Praise the Lord. Because love is not selfish. Can I get a witness? It has selfish self in it, but it's not selfish so you only think about yourself because you recognize that it's beyond you. If God had been selfish, there'd be no Jesus. If God had been selfish, it'd be no salvation. Can I get a witness? 
If God had been selfish, amen, it would be no, amen, no healing. Can I get a witness? We'll all just be in sickness and disease. But how many times have we called on the name of God in the name of Jesus? Huh? How many times have we answered our prayer? I was just talking to the brother before we started service. Amen. All of us here, whether we believe totally like the Bible says or not, anybody that say they really believe in God, something has happened to them to make them believe in God. Because you never saw God. You never saw him. God is invisible. But like Romans said, he has taken the invisible and somehow made it visible to your mind. Even if you cannot articulate it to the next person, even to your closest lover or friend or family member, so that they can understand what you're talking about. You're like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't believe in God. But you know, because it's your individual belief, because you came in this world by yourself. And when you go to stand before the judgment, guess who you're going to be standing for? You're going to be standing for you. It's like going to court. You're not standing for everybody. They, when they call you something, you the court, you coming for you. Is that right? They ask you, are you innocent or guilty? Is that right? So when you stand and you think God don't have more sense than a, a knuckle-headed man down here? Come on. So when you stand before God, you're going to be standing before God like uh, Revelation chapter 20 said, the books were open. God don't need us to talk, I don't believe. Just open the books. And can you imagine the books being rattled down from A to Z, all the things that we've done? It would bring tears to our eyes. We're like, wow, God, you things that we've done that we forgot. You ever did something and then all of somewhere, nowhere, you could have did it years ago, and all of a sudden came to you just like it happened yesterday, but all that time you forgot about it, and all of a sudden something just come to you, it's like, wow, I did that. You know what I mean? It could be good or bad. You know what I mean? But you just remember out of nowhere, you're like, wow. Now imagine you standing there in the judgment of God and the books are open and everything you ever did all your life is right there. It probably would make some of us hang our head and say, wow, man, I don't got a chance. But in Revelation 20 from 11 to 15, it says, and then another book was open. The book of life. And if you can just hear your name being called off the book of life, because you know if your name is in there, you're all right. But if your name, because it said whoever was, it didn't say nothing about the rest of us, it said the books were open. But whoever's name was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So why do I preach so hard? I'm going to ask y'all. Do I preach hard for money? No. Is it for a car? No. A house? No. What do y'all think I preach so hard for? For you all salvation. Am I telling y'all to follow me? No. Who am I telling y'all to follow? Say that a little louder. Jesus Not me, right? No. I need Jesus Christ. Every time I do something wrong, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it reminds me that's why I need a Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8, we are saved by faith through grace, least no man can boast. Because when you start boasting and think you're up there, the devil can trip you just like that. And God will let you know the devil just, get out of here. You ain't nothing. I only they couldn't get you because Christ was protecting you. As soon as you start thinking that, if I, you, or anyone else start thinking we're so strong, and if God just, just pulled back a little bit like he did with Job, said, all right, go ahead, but don't touch his soul. Go ahead, get her, but don't touch her soul. Satan will have a field day with us because his job is to do what? Rob, kill, and destroy us. Can I get a witness? But because of Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, I have trust in him. I put my trust in him. And like the song said, let me not be ashamed. Give me the sixth verse of uh, second of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. Sixth verse? Yes, sir. All right. Six verse um, 2, 6 verse on. Um, so then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him. All right. Stop right there. Just as you receive Christ, right? Mm -hmm. You got to continue in him. You can't start and, 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 and leave him. Because there, hold up. This is what I said. Where is God that y'all know? Where does God live at? In heaven. Heaven is where? Above, right? There, this computer is right in front of my face, this laptop, right? I don't know how to work this laptop right. 
And it's right here. So don't you think God knows that we don't really know how to manage with God, right? God have to reveal himself to us. But wouldn't you want it on record how many times you... Now, when the Bible says in Luke 18, men ought to always pray. I think it's First Thessalonians. Give me five, First Thessalonians 5, 17, someone. I think it said pray without ceasing, but I want to make sure. First Thessalonians 5, 17. That's what it says? Pray without ceasing. Okay, so now, two things. Men ought to always pray. Pray without ceasing. Men ought to always pray. When? When? Always. When? Always. Pray without what? So that's like, that's again, always, right? So it's never a time that we should not be praying. You know why? Because prayer is talking to God. What is prayer? Yeah, not telling God what you want. More so, thy kingdom come. Mm -hmm. Thy will be done. Where? On earth. Somebody point to your head. On earth. Somebody say on earth. On earth. That means in your mind, right? Because if you can't get it, you, ain't, you don't got it. <laughs> so, or if you can't get it, you won't have it. You know, because somebody will be listening to say, well, yeah, he sure speak with the wrong pronunciation. Well, God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. If you did not get it, if you did not receive it, then you will not have it. Amen? You ain't got it! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen? Praise the Lord. That's so everybody can understand. Is that right? right? If he didn't give it to you, and if he don't give it to you, you will not have it. You will not possess it. Is that right? So we have to pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, help me in the name of Jesus. You're so far away, but yet you're so near. I need your help, God. In the name of Jesus, I need salvation. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. But God, I'm a weak man. I'm a weak woman. I need your strength. Can I, can I just call on you, God? Can I just lean on you? In the name of Jesus, I summon you, God. Can you just whisper something in my ear? Can you just touch my body? Can you just come in my house? In the name of Jesus, can you touch my husband, touch my wife, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my son, my daughter, my sister, my brother? Can you just help me, God? God is me standing in the need of prayer. Can I get a witness? I need you, God, like I never needed you before. God, I'm getting closer. The more I live, I don't know, the more I know I'm going to die. Can I get a witness? I see the three bases. Now, amen. Like first, second, and third. I see being born. I see living. And I see dying. But I don't see heaven. And I don't see hell. But I know that it's coming. So, God, since I see that we've been born into the world, and since I see living in the world, I see the evil and I see the good. And I see that we die, babies die, infants die, children die, teenagers die, young adults die, older adults die. We all die. And since we all die, and since the book done proved that we all die, then I believe that I'm also going to be judged for heaven and hell. Now, if there's a hell and hell is an eternal life like heaven, I don't want to live in eternal hell. Can I get a witness? So I'm calling on you, God. I'm putting my prayers in, God. And then if it don't seem I'm getting in, you know how a, some, some people ask you stuff over and over again, even though you might have said no, but they don't give up? You ever had that kind of person in your life that they just don't give up? Hallelujah. And sometimes you thought you wouldn't give in, but you gave in. Uh, hallelujah. I want to talk to God. Hallelujah. I want to say, God, please don't turn your back on me. Can I get a witness? This is what Psalm 51. Lord, 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 Lord. In you, in you, Lord. Amen. I, I, I need you. Amen. Against you and you against you only that I sin. Create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me. Can I get a witness? Uh, oh, God, purge me. Wash me, God. Uh, oh, God, you broke my bones, but heal my bones. Can I get a witness? Uh, if you can go into the valley of dry bones uh, and tell the prophet to speak to the wind, that the wind will come and bring the bones back together, then God, you can blow on me with the Holy Spirit and change my life. And you can be on dope. You can be on alcohol. You can be on illicit sex. You can be a hater. You can be a pedophile. You can be anything, a murderer. You can be a cusser. But whatever you are, God can blow on you and change your life. Can I get a witness up in here? But we got to call on him. 
He sends the word out. So right now in 2013, going into 2014 and whatever, what is the idea of even talking about the word? To tell somebody about the love of God because we are dying. Preachers at the funeral are not telling nobody that they're going to hell. They probably would get killed in, 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 if they did. So nobody want to hear, hear nothing about, amen, their brother, their sister, their mama, their daddy, their cousin, anybody else went to hell, their friend. They don't want to hear that. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Can I get a witness? So the preacher can't tell you that no matter how much of a gangbanger he or she was, that is, it looked like they're on their way to hell. Because even if they say they look like they're going to hell, I think somebody will stop crying and jump up and they probably pull a gun out. But we need to know that this is serious business. Can I get a witness? There's only three things that it can be, it looks like to me, brothers and sisters. You either die and stay asleep. You either die and stay asleep or you die and go to heaven or hell. That's three things. You either die and stay asleep and then we don't have nothing to worry about. But if there's a heaven and a hell, Lord God have mercy. Can I get a witness? So it looks to me, I would rather have some money in my pocket and don't need it than to need it and don't have it. So if I can get all the Jesus that I can and I come to the end of the road and I'm just laying down, right? And I never wake up. I'm good. But if I'm awakened from my sleep to stand on God's judgment line, on my way to hell, I got a problem. Now, let me give y'all something that God has given all of us. Have you ever drink, dreamt, dreamt, no, correct pronunciation would be dreamt. Have you ever dreamt when you were asleep? Now, your body is laying there. You, whoever else in the house can look at you. You're just laying there still, look like you ain't. But in your dream, you're moving around. You ain't laying there, right? Watch me now. Walk with me. Imagine if you're having a good dream. That's like heaven, right? You lay in there, your body, in, let's say the, your bed, your couch, your floor is the grave. You lay in there, you, you, you're dead, right? You sleep, but you're dead. But in your mind, you just as alive as you ever were. You ain't sleeping in your dream. You're having a good time, right? And if you're having a good time, that's a life. In that dream, right? You living a life, right? You don't never have to come out of that reality. Because even though your body is on the floor, on the couch, on the bed, wherever it's at, right? If you never come back, but you living, you walking with me? You living, you living good. But imagine if you're having a bad dream or a nightmare. Have you ever had one of those? And you wish that you could, you, you, you in the dream, you don't know you sleep. You, you, you living, you don't know you sleep. And you're like, wow, I'm getting stabbed, I'm getting shot, or I'm falling, or something bad is happening. It could even be something bad happening to someone else. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you say, ooh, I'm on the couch, I'm on the floor, I'm in the bedroom. Hey, this is my house. Thank you, God. I'm glad that I woke up. Because that nightmare was hell. Even that was hell. Because you don't want to stay in that position. Is that right? You was, you was looking for an escape. What if you couldn't escape? So God gives us what I think, walk with me, that God gives us a symbol of heaven. Sleep, dreaming, good, heaven. Sleep, dreaming, bad, hell. If you don't come back, you stop. So we die, right? If you go to hell, that's like a nightmare. You walk with me? It's a nightmare. It got to be a reason why we dream. And if, for no other reason to show us that though you're laying there, your mind goes on. Your spirit goes on. You're laying in, your body's just laying there. Everybody can tell, oh no, he or she's right here, right? Even people that travel spiritually, they tell you they can go from one state to another. I've known people that in traveling, this is a little deep for y'all, but even in jail, that practice with their mind could blow in and whisper in a person's ear. That's some heavy stuff. People that can move objects, telekinesis. So can you, you don't know what state that your mind can go. So if there's a heaven or hell, you don't want to go to hell. Am I right? Give me another scripture. Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. Let's go over verse 6 again. Go over 6 again? Yeah. 
I so then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in him. 7. Rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Now, this is what I'm telling y'all, just like I, when I add First Peter in there. He's not supposed to be righteous only because people are righteous to you, right? You're supposed to be righteous even when people are not righteous to you, but it's, it's hard. So don't dare not point because you know when people are like, oh you're supposed to be a Christian now somebody somebody do you real dirty and because you got feeling and you act emotional or you do some other like, you know people oh I thought you was a Christian I'm still a Christian but I maybe I have to be strengthened I'm not gonna turn my back on Christ because you heard me say something wrong or saw me do something wrong because that's what Christ came for so what I'm a I'm a throw all the throw the, if you're taking the test and you don't do good do you throw do you stop going to school no. It, life is full of tests, right? Do you stop? At what? You go, you're going to throw in your relationship because what? Because he or she didn't dot every I and cross every T? And the question is this. This is what Jesus was saying when he was writing on the ground for sin. You that's without sin. Somebody said in the Greek he was saying you without the same sin. So you mean you don't you don't miss dotting no I's and you don't miss crossing no T's. So you're going to stone this person to death now. You're going to say that it's all over and done because you are so perfect of a man, you're so perfect of a woman that you can't see no imperfection in nobody. See, that's why when your arm hurts, like you said, you know, that arm is a part of your body, right? You don't want to cut it off, do you? You know how important that is. And you know by living with it so many years that it can get well, right? And it's a very good, and you can even use it while it's hurt, right? God uses us while we're hurt. Amen. When you don't dot the I's and you don't cross the T's, you know what that caused you to do? Would be a little bit more humble, a little bit more careful. Amen. Because it, rec it lets you recognize how much you need Jesus, how much I need. Every time I do something wrong, brother, it reminds me how I need you. And I thank God for Jesus. Because if I could have did it by myself, then it wouldn't it wouldn't have been no scripture say, but God, so what? Love the what? The world that he gave. His only begotten son. So I was in that world. I'm in the world right now. But he said, don't be what? Of it. Be in it. So that means as you get closer to Christ, you start separating yourself from certain things. Is that right? Because you've got to get among those that want to be strong in Christ. Amen? Because 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. Because the unbelievers are mostly, if you're not drawing them, they're drawing you. Amen? Is, what, what's the word I, I use? Somebody is persuading the other. Huh? Amen. Because they say, I don't like to say it, but I'm going to use birds of the same feather do what? So people of the same spirit do what? Flock together. You know, smokers hang with smokers. Drinkers hang with drinkers. Right? Drinkers and smokers hang with drinkers and smokers. Is that right? And if you're not of them, it will try to antagonize you or either you're going to antagonize them. Amen? All right, give me a little bit more of that. All right, see, see to it that no one takes you captive. You will hollow and deceptive philosophy. All right, now, don't let your mind be controlled by deceptive and hollow, uh, what, what, what was that? This is, um, do hollow and deceptive philosophy. Philosophy. You know what I mean? We get caught up on people that can talk so good. You know what I mean? But it's on Christ. Can I get a witness? It's on Christ. If it ain't about Christ, it ain't about nothing. I don't care about how good it sounds. You understand what I'm saying? It has to be about Christ. Amen. So somebody say, oh, you a fanatic. Yeah, I am. Because what's in the root word fanatic? Fan. I'm a fan of Christ. Just like some uh, people are a fan of San Francisco, I'm a fan of Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? Some people are a fan of the Jets and the Giants. I'm a fan of Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness? All right, give me um, some more. All right, which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. All right, see, uh, what verse is that? That's eight. All right, let me get it. All right, eight. For though I be, uh, oh, no, no, no. All right, beware this, beware. Because men can spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, 
after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of religion, a lot of, well, the religion is everything. Because some people say, I don't believe in religion. Religion is a mindset. Whatever your mindset is, religion. so let's say godly religion, right? So there are different sets of godliness. You know what I mean? People go into different segments. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it causes them to, some people get philosophical, start talking slick, and they throw a little bit of God in it to make it sound good. You understand what I'm saying? And some people get caught up in it because all somebody got to do is say is God and Christ, and somebody think, oh, wow, that's godliness. But if you don't know the word, you get just as full as you can be. You know what I mean? So it's saying beware. Be on the lookout for men that spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after traditions of men, after the ways of the world and not after Christ. For in Christ dwelleth the fullness. In who? In Christ. And then when it says in him, it's talking about Christ. Dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Oh, where was I? Yeah. And you are complete in who? In Christ, which is the head of all principality and power. Because if you go to Ephesians, it says put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. But if you deal with Christ, Christ is over every power. What did I say? Christ is over every power. So there are powers in the world. Presidential power, political powers, spiritual powers, demonic power, monetary power, economical power, a whole lot of power, right? But guess what? In you, and you are complete in Christ which is the head of all principality and power. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, if you can learn how to call on Christ, anybody can call on Christ when everything is all right. But I'm talking about through bad times. Instead of cursing, Jesus. Jesus. Even if you don't say it out loud, because people will put you in a saying something. Okay? Some people will. You got to be watch out. The person that thinks loves you the most will say, oh, look, she, he went crazy. They were just around here going, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And since they got the devil in them and they living in the devil's world, you talking about Jesus will make people think you're foolish. You know what I'm saying? So you may not have to start out those You may not want to say it out loud. Come on, huh? Now, if you do, you got to know the consequences in a, in a demonic world because demons hate you. You say, well, how if the demons, if Jesus is the power of a demon, how did some people get put in the same time? Because that's the test. You got to go through trial and tribulation. And that's the test so the devil can tell you, oh, you see, I won. You ain't win. You demon. It's still Jesus. Come on, say amen. But you got to be strong. So I tell you, since I've been through a lot of things, you don't have to say it out loud. But on the job, say it in your mind. Jesus. And they tell you you can't pray. You can pray. Nobody can stop you from praying. They don't know what you're saying in your mind. How many people have you cursed out without them hearing you? How many people have you clunked upside the head and they didn't feel it? Praise the Lord. You did it in, with the imagination of your mind. Is that right? How many things? How many things have? How many things have we done wrong that we actually didn't do it? But Jesus said, if you think it in your heart, you done did it. So why can't I pray in my heart? Huh? Why can't I speak the word of God in my heart? Come on, come on, say amen. Huh? Amen. So I'm calling on God in my heart. Amen. Because in Him, Amen. I'm complete. In him I'm complete. In him I'm complete. I'm not complete of myself. I'm complete in Jesus. And he's the head of all principalities. In whom? In Jesus. Also, I'm circumcised with the circumcision made without hand. In other words, he peels away the stoniness. He peels away the hatred. He peels away the unforgiveness. And he puts love in my mind. Come on, can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. He, amen. he reveals amen, what's good in me. Because there's no good in me except he puts it in me. He plants it in me. And then he brings it up in me. Can I get a witness? Amen. And putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with Christ in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him, Jesus, from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with Christ, having forgiven you for all your transgressions. Yeah. So now I owe him. What did I just say? I owe him. So I don't live right because right me, my work saved me. 
He already did the saving. But because I believe him and I accept him and he accepted me, now I work for him. Come on. Now I'm going to be a better man, a better woman. Why? Because Satan didn't do nothing for me but caused me to act a fool. Satan didn't do nothing but have me, my name written on the book of death instead of the book of life. So since now my name has been transferred off the damnation book to the salvation book, I owe Christ. I owe God. Come on. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. And in other words, like that in the books in Revelation chapter 20. He's nailed them books to the cross. Nailed those faces. They, they, he buried them. Come on, say amen. Having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. Let no man therefore judge you in the meat you eat or the drink you drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. Come on. You see, some folk hold on to the Old Testament. Not that the Old Testament is very valid, but we understand that Christ fulfilled all that. So now I need to walk in the love of Christ because you've got people that hold on to holy days, Sabbath days, and don't eat this and that, but they don't hold on to Christ. Come on. Let no man beguile you of your rewards and voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up in his mind. We're not worshiping no angel. We worship the Christ. Come on. And not holding the head from which all the parts of the body, joints, and veins, having nourishment, ministered, and knit together, increasing with the increase of God. Amen. And not holding the head. Whenever they, they people holding on to, to angels, but they're not holding on to Jesus, which is the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment and ministry. In other words, if you're not holding on to Christ, your body ain't right. You know how your arm get healed? By putting it in your mind. My, my arm going to get healed. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be better off than I was before. You know, when, they, when you go to, uh, what do they say when you go to rehabilitation, right? And they start telling you to do like this and do like that. Well, it got to be in your mind. Is that right? Your mind got to speak healing, right? So even at home, when you know, you say, I'm going to be all right. Is that right? I'm going to eat. I'm going to rest. I'm going to do a little bit of exercise. Come on. Huh? And I'm going to be all right in the name of Jesus. Is that right? All right. Now, wherefore, verse 20, if you be dead with Christ from the world, why, as though living in the world, are you subject to the orders of the world? In other words, we're supposed to be following Christ. Then it says 21, touch not, taste not, handle not which are all to perish with the users after the commandments and the doctrines of men. Don't worry about the doctrines of men. Worry about the doctrine of Christ, which things have indeed a show of wisdom and will worship and humility and neglecting of the body, not in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. In other words, when some people are so busy trying to follow after man, they don't forgot what Christ is all about. Amen. Somebody say on Christ. Right. The solid rock I stand. Solid rock. So basically, as I get ready to close, ladies and gentlemen, what I've been sharing with you is that, like Christ in Second and Second Peter chapter two, you have to follow rules. Come on, huh? And it's not always going to be easy. Can I get a witness? Amen. Sometimes it's going to seem a little bit hard. Can I get a witness? But in the name of Jesus, sir, you can make it. What did I just say? In the name of Jesus, you what? Somebody say, I can make it. I can make it on Christ, the solid rock I stand, and I tell you right now, you can make it. Huh? Amen. The race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that does what? Endure to the end. Somebody say endure. So under your trial and under your tribulation, under your cloudy days, under your teary eyes, what are you supposed to do? You got to endure. Somebody say endure. And this is why I keep on preaching to you so hard and teaching to you so hard. I want you to endure. I don't want you to throw in the towel. You know some people give up right when they get ready to cross the finish line. Come on, huh? I don't want you to give up. Come on. I don't want to give up. I want to hold on to Christ. Can I get a witness? Uh, amen. You can make it in the name of Jesus. Uh, and I came to Jesus uh, just as I was. Uh, I was weary, wounded, and sad. Uh, but I found in Jesus uh, a resting place. Uh, it's not just because uh, so a preacher told me. Uh, it's not because my mom and daddy told me. Uh, but I put it to the test. Can I get a witness? Uh, and I find out that on Christ... Uh, 
and the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. And if I might leave y'all today, I want to tell you the same thing that I told my daddy. And my daddy is my daddy. And I wouldn't be here if it was not for my daddy and my mama. But on Christ, since I came here and since I learned about Christ, I don't want nobody to die without the spirit of the Lord. Can I get a witness? So I'm just talking to you to tell you to hold on to Jesus. Don't let go of Jesus, but keep on calling on that name. You may not know Genesis to Revelation. You may not even know Genesis to Exodus. But if you know the name Jesus, you can say, Jesus, I bow before you. I want to be saved. You're not going to go before God. Amen. Quote no scriptures. No how. You're going to come before God and he want to know, do you know the Savior? I came to Jesus just as I was. And I'm trusting in him. He saves me. He makes me what I am. He takes me out of the muck and the mire. And he put my feet on the solid rock. Can I get a witness? He changes my life. Sometimes I got to cry sometimes. But he wiped away the tears from my eye. Can I get a witness? Sometimes I don't dot the eyes And I don't cross the T's. But he helps me. Because once I don't reckon, once I recognize that I've done wrong. And I come to him and say, Lord, I'm weak. But thou art strong. He comes in. He'll put his arm around you. And he'll help you to be the man or the woman you got to be. Can I get a witness? On Christ, the solid rock I stand. I got to keep on calling on Christ in this demon filled world. Somebody got to call him. Say, Jesus. What did I say? Say, Jesus. What did I say? Say, Jesus. You got to call him. Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus in the midnight hour. And all over again. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. If you go to Matthew chapter 7, it talks about the wise and the fool. In order for you to be wise, you got to build your life on Christ. If you don't build your life on Christ, you're a fool. And if you don't believe you're a fool, keep on being a fool and find out in the end. I don't want to come to the end. In Matthew 7 and 21, and he said, many of you say that you cast out demons in my name. You prophesied in my name. You went to church. You praised. You shabbat. You gave tithes and offerings. You praised the Lord. You had a philosophy. But I don't even know you. Because you never gave me your heart. This is the heart he's talking about. Your mind. You got to give it. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart. All your mind. Somebody say you're a fanatic. Well, you better be a fanatic if you want to go to heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. Everybody say amen. Oh, hey. Everybody come on and sing. Oh, amen. Everybody say Everybody say Everybody sing. Oh, 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 one more time, hey, I want to make it to heaven, y'all, and I want you to make it too, oh, amen, hey, most heavenly Father, God, as we get ready to depart from this place, but not from your presence, we ask that you touch everyone that hear this word. Touch, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. To be the man that you want me to be. Help us be the men you want us to be. Help us to be the women. Amen. Touch every female in this, hallelujah, in this place. And not only those in this place, but every man and female listening to this word. Help us to be saved. Help us to be born again. Help us not just to be wasting time. But help us to be delivered. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say amen. 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 And amen. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. Amen. Until the next time. May God bless you and happy.
Happy days to you. That's all we're going to say. Praise the Lord.